And Lord, we thank you for the word that you're going to have for your people. So as your daughter, I do not take it lightly. As I stand behind this desk, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart is acceptable in your sight, for you are my strength and my redeemer. Amen, amen, and amen. I invite you, since um, the time that Rick normally does the screens for us was the time that he was in the hospital. So I'm going to ask this morning if um, you want to follow along if we walk through the scripture as you turn back to Luke 13, 31 to 35. Um, this is the second Sunday of Lent. And as I said last Sunday, these stories in Lent um, intrigued me last week. We looked at how um, Jesus was just strong and dealing with the temptation that was all around him. And that's one of the scriptures that we see a lot and it reminds us that we can be strong also. I shared that message with some friends and my niece and her fiance and reminding them that we have to know what our kryptonite is. So when we get weak, we um, can anticipate it coming because we know what our kryptonite is. And when we are weak, we find that scripture, that song, and for them, they said it with their baby's face, that brings them back to a place of normalcy. This week, we see Jesus out and continuing his journey to Jerusalem. So it's interesting how this particular scripture, it looks like the Pharisees are siding with Jesus. But let me give you some background on some of the characters from this week. We see Herod, but it's not the same Herod um, from Jesus' birth. That was Jesus' father. Herod the Great was dangerous because he was powerful and paranoid. Bad combination, being powerful and paranoid. He got a lot of power from Rome. They allowed him to do a lot of things and he had a lot of land that he was over. And in his paranoia and using his power, he did a lot of mean things. This Herod is the son, Antipas. And he is just as much to be reckoned with as his father, but Rome didn't give him as much power as they gave his father, nor did they give him as much area to cover as he gave his father. So, but it doesn't stop him from being much of a menace to society as his father was. So we have the Pharisees, it says at that time, some Pharisees approached Jesus and said, go, get away from here because Herod wants to kill you. When you look at that, he said the Pharisees are warning Jesus to go someplace so he won't be killed by Herod. And we would look at it, if we looked at it on the surface, we would think that um, finally the Pharisees are coming around and they understand Jesus' mission. But it has more to do with the fact that the Pharisees believed in order and justice. And they thought if something was gonna happen to Jesus that it should be carried out properly. So they had a problem with the fact that Herod the son could just snatch Jesus at any time and kill him. So it wasn't as much as they were supporting um, Jesus and they were warning him because they were now friends, but because they were against what Herod was doing. So Jesus says to them, go tell that fox, look, I'm throwing out demons and healing people today and tomorrow, and on the third day I will complete my work. Let's look at this, go tell that fox. You look at that, you think, thinking, Jesus calling somebody out of their name? I know Jesus gets upset sometimes, but he called the man a fox. And when you think about a fox, a fox is cunning. <laughs> um, and in that time period, you know, the, the fox and the jackal were about the same, and the jackals on their do not eat list. So he was really being mean, calling Herod a fox. But foxes are also dangerous to the common order because they attack things stealthily. So if you look at Jesus being the lamb and Herod wanting to come after Jesus, that's an interesting comparison and an interesting use of the word fox. So the funny thing to me is not, not funny, a ha-ha funny, but maybe a little funny, ha-ha funny, but the ironic funny thing about it is Jesus is not gonna hide from Herod. Now you have the father trying to kill him when he was a child, and now you have the son trying to kill him as an adult. So Jesus said to him, look, I'm throwing out demons and healing people today and tomorrow and on the third day my work is complete. In other words, he's saying, 
You know where to find me and what I'm going to be doing. I'm not afraid of you. So they knew where he was to come to deliver the message and he's sending a message back to them. This is what I'm going to be doing over the next couple of days. So I'll, be, I'll travel this place today, tomorrow I'm going to travel this place, and the next day I'm going to plow, tra travel someplace else. If you're going to do that, here I am. But I'm on a mission. I'm staying focused on what God has called me to do. Now in his mission to stay in focus, he didn't have tunnel vision. You know, sometimes we have tunnel vision and we stay only focused on what's in front of us. He was on his mission to continue doing all the things that God has called him to do. And I'm sure when we, we meaning us, when we get a threatening message from somebody, sometimes it may shake us or throw us off our God. I don't know about you, but you know, sometimes you can get 10 people say wonderful things about you. And then that one person comes along and says something and that's the one that sticks in your head. All these people are praising Jesus and following Jesus and looking forward to Jesus coming to visit them. And this one voice, unlike us, does not shake Jesus at all. As a matter of fact, Jesus challenges him and says, this is what I'm going to be doing. I'm not going to stop because you're threatening me. I know who your father was and I know who you are. But I also know who my father is and you know who I am. So I'm not afraid. So the interesting thing for me is as we were thinking about Jesus going through all of what he's going through and how he's not getting thrown off his game, he's not tempted to be thrown off, especially in this time of Lent because things happen that sometimes throw us off of our goal, but we are asked to stay focused. And I'll, I'll give you a, a quick example. Um, if, if, say for instance, you decided you were going to give up fast food for Lent. You watch TV, and now every commercial comes on TV is a fast food place trying to get you to come buy some food, right? So then you're driving along your normal route, and they're fixing a pothole on the road, so you have to get rerouted someplace else. And this new route, all you see is fast food <laughs> restaurants. You get to work, you get to school, you get to wherever you're going, there's somebody walking with a fast food bag. You look in the trash can, can, there's fast food refuge from the food that you would normally be eating if you weren't in Lent. That's, that's, that's what this role is today. Jesus is focused on what he needs to do. And all of these people are like that fast food is trying to get him to do something else. Jesus is not afraid and he's not going to go off course. He's going to stay focused on what God has called him to do. And then Jesus goes on and says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who killed the prophets and stoned those who were sent to you, how often have I wanted to gather your people just as hen gathers her chicks under her wings? Jesus, of course, knows about the Old Testament and, there, and it talks about the Old Testament, how they wanted to grab the, the people who were exiled up under their wings and bring them back together and protection. That's what he's talking about. But he's also addressing a little bit of being discouraged that Jerusalem hasn't quite come as far as he would like to have them to come, that they still need to be protected, that they still need to hear a word from him. So he has to get there and finish his mission. But sometimes when we're on a mission, we get tunnel vision. And we do that in the church. Get so set on the things that we're doing inside the church that we forget that there are things that are happening outside of the church that need our attention. In this message, I see Jesus telling us that we have to stay focused but not have tunnel vision. We have to know what we are called to do and do that in spite of the things that are happening around us. I know there's a lot of crazy things happening around us and I know there's a lot of things that would get us off course. Say for instance, today is St. Patrick's Day, right? So St. Patrick's Day is the day that I read that Christianity came to Ireland, right? With those, okay. So even though St. Patrick's Day falls in Lent and you have people just eating and drinking all the things that they like, they said that this is the day that you can put all that aside. Right? That's, that's, that's the legend, right? You can put all that stuff aside on St. Patrick's Day. Even though you're in the middle of Lent and you're trying to stay focused and you're trying to stay away from that fast food, this is St. Patrick's Day. You can put all that aside and enjoy all those things, which is why people go crazy. Because tomorrow you have to go back to do what you said you're going to do during Lenten season. But sometimes people aren't strong enough to do that. They're not strong enough to go off course and get back in line. So today I'm not really condoning going crazy. Enjoy yourself. Amen. Enjoy yourself, but stay focused because we are Christ's hands and feet. 
We have to do what God has called us to do on this mission that he is sending us on. Just as Jesus was telling them, I know that this man is threatening me, but I know what I was sent here to do. So you know what? I'm going to continue on my journey to heal, to deliver demons, to talk to people, to encourage people. And that's what God is calling us to do. But sometimes when things get troublesome in the church, we get tunnel vision. And we only do the things that we need to do in the church to keep the church going. But God is calling us to continue our journey of helping everybody to be the hands and feet of Christ for the transformation of the world. This is an all. Sometimes we can get so focused on what our media need is that we don't see the hurting that's going on around us. I don't know if, um, well last week I mentioned that I was, I, w I was sick. You know that I was sick and I'm, I'm doing better. But I had a doctor's appointment last week that had nothing to do with how I was feeling last week, but it had a lot to do with how I was feeling in general. I was an athlete and being an athlete, a female athlete during the time that I was an athlete, they trained us like they did the males, not realizing be because our bodies are built a little differently, they had to train us differently. So I sustained a lot of injuries that I'm feeling now in my older age. Still fabulous, I know, but in my older age, <laughs> I'm still I'm experiencing some aches and pains. So Thursday morning I had a doctor's appointment to look at my knee. I had a lot of damage done to my knee and I've experienced sometimes so much pain that I can't sleep. And I'm one of those people that when I take pain pills it makes my heart race. So I try not to take pain pills unless I absolutely have to. So I go to this doctor's appointment. I'm tired because I'm worried about what she might say. Knowing that in 2016 when I went to see a doctor, they told me that I had to have a knee replacement, total knee replacement. But you see, I still got my knee, so you know, it didn't happen. Um, so I'm going expecting them to tell me that. So she starts talking about pain management and all the other things that I can do instead. And then she wants to do a comparison. If you've ever had knee problems and you've had the knees, they ask you to lay on your back and you bend your knee. And then they pull your knee and you turn your knee. And, and see, I was mentally focused on her doing all of that to my bad knee, right? So I can tell her well, that's loose and I can feel this. And you know, I'm, I'm being all calm, being cool. So then she goes to my left knee and she pulls it, ow! And she touched, ow! Ow! I got so focused <laughs> on my right knee the problem that was happening right in front of me, that I didn't acknowledge that there was other pain going on in my body. That's what we do sometimes in the church. We get so focused on what's happening right here and right now. We don't notice the pain that's going on around us. This particular warning from the Pharisees could have made Jesus focus on, I need to get to Jerusalem and I'm not worried about anybody else because I don't want Herod to attack me. But Jesus didn't get tunnel vision. He didn't concentrate on the pain in his one knee and forget that he was overcompensating on his other knee and that's where all the pain came from in my other knee. He realized that he was on a mission, staying focused but also doing all of what we are called to do around us. My brothers and sisters, sometimes it's difficult to stay on the course that God has called us on. We've seen a lot of horrific things lately. We have some brothers and sisters in New Zealand who are worshiping. And we are in a society that people are so, have such tunnel vision on what they think is right that they endanger other people's lives. Even to the point that he wanted to share his vision of what he thought was right and live streamed what he did. So as we pray for our Muslim brothers and sisters and we're on a journey to share the story of Jesus Christ. But we're doing that in the atmosphere where there are other religions that are around us. We can't get so focused on what God has called us to do only and forget that there are other people who are around us. Amen? So when Jesus was on this journey, He reminds us that sometimes we have to deal with people who are unpleasant to us. That things we may not like to see. That still in the midst of that, we have a job to do. We have a people to serve. We have a people to change. We have a God 
that deserves our honor and play, praise. A Jesus who we can follow. A Holy Spirit that leads, guides, and directs us every day. This particular story just touches me because it reminds me personally that regardless of what's going on in my life, I can't only be concerned about me. And sometimes we are tempted to do that. So like Jesus, we have to stay focused on what we have to do today, tomorrow, and until our journey is over. We have to stay focused, but not use tunnel vision. Amen.